Today's tip, we're going to talk about 3D sketches. I've had the request from uh, one of you out there for a little bit of help on 3D sketches. I've done a lot of training in my past and uh, taught 3D sketches and heard from many people that they've tried to learn 3D sketching from a book just straight out of it, and most that I've spoken to have failed, and that is in the dozens of people that we had the discussion with. It's actually pretty simple to do. Um, we need to get more into it like uh, planes and things like that we'll touch on here we'll make a part two to this and um, deal with planes but just how to visualize in the 3d sketch moving away from that x y because we'll be adding the z it's a few new sketch relations that you have that uh, like horizontal vertical they don't exist in the I mean, in the 3d version of a sketch only the 2d so we have a long x a long y and a long z so what we'll do here is we'll uh, the 3D sketch for one is you'll see your normal sketch toolbar button and we come up underneath it and there is the 3D sketch. Of course this is a tool that if you don't like the pull down you could add the 3D sketch button anywhere you wanted to but by default it, it does live right underneath the arrows underneath the regular sketch tool. Notice no asking for what plane to start, what face to start on, which edge. It automatically starts. It doesn't care X, Y, and Z draw anywhere and everywhere in space. There are a few tools we don't have. We don't have, as you can see, slots. We don't have polygons. We don't have ellipses. And if we can't draw, um, do text. But pretty much everything these days is all there. When this tool first came out many, many years ago, all we had is lines and splines and fillets. That's it. And it made it rather difficult. Uh, the best thing they added in was the circles and the rectangles. Here on the screen, you can see this is what we're going to be drawing. Uh, it's a real simple piece, but it gets through, and this is actually from the training book. It gets you through and teaches you how to see and draw in that 3D space. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to pick the line tool. And uh, what you can see here is at the origin, or as you'll see, it'll start moving to be in and on where you drew last, a larger UCS shows up. And what this does is it kind of shows you you have to draw somewhere, so it's showing you kind of what piece of paper or what wall or what part of the room, however you want to visualize it, that you're drawing on. Uh, right here we have, a, it lines it up in a, here in my beginning in the basic XYZ of the part. But as I press the tab key, we can see that it changes. I hit tab again, it changes. So it's basically going from plane 1, 2, and 3. This is not where you're limited to draw. Of course, you can draw anywhere you want to. But if you're looking for easy relations like you would normally get a horizontal vertical, you can get the along X, along Y, along Z type relations. So you can get your auto relations as you do in the 2D. So basing on what we were going to draw earlier, uh, we can have it here, and I need to draw back here. Now, visually, it looks like I'm drawing away from me in space, but that's kind of where it'll get you. If I want to draw back in space, I hit the tab key. And we see that now I can draw back in there. See my icons? I'm along the YZ, and then you have the relationship of Z. I'm drawing the same as you would the horizontal vertical in the Z. So I pull it back some. I need to draw it up. And as soon as I clicked and created it, the UCS moved. And I don't need to hit tab because I just need to go up, and I have a arrow or I'm on that particular plane come down. I want to come out some, so I hit the tab key and I can either use this one or I could use the stand-up one. It all depends on what you feel and what you think you want or what you're most comfortable with. Both in this case, this one and this one are exactly the same. Click it down. Need to go down again. Need to go over. I'm going to Pull it on over. I held down control while pushing the middle mouse button. And press tab, come on back some. And then tab till I get the drawback. Okay. You can see it here. If I look at it in the front, we got our 2D. Look at it in the right. And look at it in the top. Okay. So we have 3D space. I'm just going to do one more new part here. 
and do it one more time but not use the tab key and that's usually where people fail on this come in here put the line tool come back and just try to make it look like what we want And we'll look at them both together. The original is on the right, and the new one is on the left. And they essentially look the same. Of course, they both need their dimensions and full relationships. They look the same, but if I look at the original to the front, we have some 3D space. You can see the things are going back in that. If we look at this one at the front, we have a mess. Okay, Look at it on the side. Everything's flat because we didn't use the tab key. All right. Close this down and put this guy in ISO. Okay, now for a little bit of relations and dimensions. When doing a 3D sketch, it is best practice in my opinion, and I've been doing this a long long time to draw then relations, then do dimensions. Um According to SolidWorks, a dimension is a relation because you can suppress them in the relations, add, remove relations dialog box. But it's the relation that should come back last unless you're having some other problems or there's a special uh, thing that needs to go on. So here we go. We can um, say we didn't get the Z. I'm going to take the Z relationship and delete it. And maybe it was out here. Okay. All you have to do is, in, like any other relation, pick, and notice we have a long X, a long Y, a long Z, and it generally highlights or bolds out the relation that it's closest to. Okay, So you know which one to choose, of course. Okay, We still have the equal relationship. We hit equal here, and we can see that that brought it down to life there. And um, See, check and move and do everything you would do with a normal 2D sketch. Throw on some dimensions. Now, dimensions, once it moves and, and acts as you want it to act, um, putting on dimensions is where it can get a lot of people also. How you pick will give you different dimensions. Based on, if I were to pick point to point, if this were a 2D sketch from here to here I could get the height or the width 3d sketch all I get is the di the direct 3d relationship between the two so in working in a 3d sketch picking faces as opposed to edges that you would normally if you want to dimension part of your 3d sketch from based off the model somewhere picking faces and lines are the best choices of course you are going to be using the points here and there but for the most part you come in here, line to line. Notice it tries to put it out here. Boom, click, and it lines up, lines the two up. 100. This thing's going to be much bigger than I expected. For here, yes, I could pick this line, okay? But just like in the 2D sketches, if later on that is not a long Y as it is right now, if it needs to go at some angle, my dimension is going to be wrong and I got to do it again. So, cancel out of that. I'll pick the line to the top point, and that'll give me uh, that distance, and it will always have to be along the particular line itself, uh, whatever this is going. All right, pull this guy up. What do we got next? We got uh, 110 here. Again, if you could pick your line, you may have problems later on, so here to here. Now, in this case, we have two different types, uh, or two different ways it could come out. It could be the height this way, popping backwards. I could pick that line and this point, and it'll go down along this line. Or, But still, depending on what you pick, you're going to get different outcomes. So I pick this line and this point. That's basically what I'm dimensioning to. I want it to be 110. Back here, from here to here. Now, the dimensions where their placement is in space, generally doesn't make a difference to your, of course, 2D drawing aspect of it. So how they're coming in space uh, along the X or the Y or the Z or wherever um, generally doesn't bother anybody. Now what I do if I do need dimensions in a different place, 
or in a particular direction. Uh, say, for instance, uh, I needed my dimension right here, the 95, I needed it to come up. For whatever reason, it was really bothering me, I needed it to come up or down like the 110 and the 75. Okay. Um, what we can do is use construction geometry. Real easy. Hit a center line geometry, put it on one of the ends, I'd pick here probably, and I could draw it along Y, or I'll just put it out here in space and say that this and this, and there's parallel. And this and this are parallel also. It stands them right up. Okay? Puts it right in there, and now when we dimension, now there is a small bug. If I dimension to the center line, whether I stay on the this side or move to the other, it will double dimension. So to trick SolidWorks, make sure it's not construction geometry. Make the dimension. And then from there, then you can change it to construction geometry. Dumb little workaround I found that we gotta use. We've had to use it for a couple years now, but it's not too bad. Construction geometry, do the dimension, or non-construction geometry, do the dimension, and then put it back to construction geometry. Okay. So as I said earlier, draw, add relations, then dimension, and then actually there's a four step. If you need rounded edges, fillets. And if this were a wiring or tubing, we'd have to fillet this in order to sweep it. Put your fillets on last, okay? Especially when you're dimensioning, because if I need to dimension from, if this were an angled line or something, the virtual sharp, putting the dimensions on just adds a whole other set of complexity to there. So we got it nice and simple here. I come in, sketch fillet, put in my 20 millimeter, and start picking edges. Yeah, yeah. Don't you hate that dialog box? Doing okay. And it adds all its other relationships to it. But we get uh, a nice, in this case, uh, fully defined sketch. If yours isn't fully defined at this time, um, you definitely um, probably don't have any relationship to the origin. Drag it on over there or fix one of the ends and you should uh, come out nice and clean. Looking at it in all directions, uh, we'll turn it up here to four view. Front top and right and ISO nice and clean. All right, let's go down here. There we go. Now there is a planes for this because you are going to need to draw in different areas, have more relationships than just a line or an arc or something like that. Um, we can see here uh, when you right click there is a plane option and you may have noticed the plane option here in your sketch toolbar. This is the plane for 3D sketches not 2D sketches. You may have also noticed in the glasses there is a planes here. This is your view your 3D sketch planes that allows them to be seen or not. They're not as robust as a regular plane but while you're in the sketch, the 3D sketch, you can start blowing um, planes around uh, works about the same as it does in SOLIDWORKS 2010. You can say I need one that is basically perpendicular to this at this point and give it OK. And uh, this is where I'll stop with planes once I say that basically when you draw a plane, on that plane as you see the grid you are working in a 2D space at this point to where we can see here when I draw a line I get horizontal and vertical relationships. Until, I'll delete this out, this line, until I double click outside and the plane itself, as if I turn it on, still exists, I can double click on it and start working on it. But I can uh, do everything, but I've never been able to figure out how to edit a 3D sketch. But um, we'll continue on this tomorrow in our next tip. And uh, we'll talk more about the planes, working in there, working the two together and benefits of 3D sketches in both sweeps and lofts.